Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Door here, and today I'll be bringing you my reaction to Ruby Ice Queen of Episode 8, titled Where You Belong. The city falls along with the deformed sillies and the robot soldiers affected by the bugs' rampage. As the situation gets chaotic, Negawise shows up with a giant statue of Nicholas, capturing the sillies one after another. Although Jean bravely confronts the statue of Jacques, who is wearing armor that reminisces the grim geist, he and Pyrrha, a resident of the dream, are captured. Meanwhile, Ruby's party managed to reach the core of the dream where the nightmare is rooted, but Negawai stands in the way, Yang and Blake are swallowed into the glyphs and disappear. So this seems like we're going to be getting an action set piece after how the last one ended, what with um all of the sillies being corrupted, all of the little weisses turning giant and starting to rampage, the um, nightmare's influence on the robot army coming back and Weiss appearing to save John and Pyrrha, but also activating the dream defenses. So who knows what's going to happen, what she's going to do with um, John and Pyrrha. And yeah, so let's get this started in three, two, one, go. But I also notice now that they're knocked out, they don't have the vines anymore. And what judgment will you deliver to your friends? I mean, she is probably the best one outside of Jon with his immunity to get close. Is it a non-corrupted? Oh, there are little Weisses still.
What exactly is her advice in this, considering they've gone against her usual um, methods? What with her whole, don't disrupt anything. I can't not bob to this song. Hmm. So Something I've been wondering. Where is Blake's totem? Like, Weiss has the white one locked away. Um, Jean found Yang's in the Silly's area. Ruby found hers in the dorm room, prison. So where is Blake's? I'm assuming those explosions were just, um, tricky and back. Yeah, okay. All right, they don't know she has a brother at this point. They don't even know she has a sister. I thought he was just going to get whacked by the broadsword of the snowboard, not um, a transforming, you know.
Well, I'm sure that went well. Interesting. Which means anyone locked in the dorm room can... Yep. Interesting. So there's a sign wherever there's a relic, which means lakes should be locked outside um, near the train. Young Sword. That's an issue. Right, because you said don't let it, the spikes touch you. I thought that just transferred the damage, but it seems I was correct initially when I said it can infect you from within. So you've sent Y straight to an infected zone. Now that's two down. Hmm. So Ruby got banished. No. Oh.
I saw the rose petals, I just wasn't sure how she managed to get around the um, Jacques statue. that Are you going to tell them about the infection, which is probably, um, yep, there we go. Yep, uh, I was about to say, which is probably making your emotions even worse, but now she seems to be passed out in. It does seem that their actions made things worse.
and the clock strikes midnight. Yeah, and that's how it ends, isn't it? No? How did you awaken? No, you're in... You're in a dream within a dream, aren't you? trying to placate you so that you don't That's a hey, Tyson. First I thought placate, then I thought, oh no, it's going to trick her into thinking she was the one they went in after, but no. And then it just turned weird. And that's where it ends, okay. So, there wasn't actually as much happening in this episode as I thought, like, for one, it says, Jean bravely confronts the statue of Jacques, who is wearing armor that reminisced the Geist. He, he pointed his sword towards Weiss, and then next minute, they were just transported straight away. Technically, he didn't confront the statue of Jacques. Also, his real interaction with it was running away from it, so... I wouldn't so much say bravely confronted it, but... Somehow, he managed to move through the city up to the... How did he manage to do that? I guess he made his way back to the rooftop and went through that door. But. Yeah, so I'm assuming that just means that the um, nightmare wasn't so much chasing him as it was chasing Pierre and the um, little Weisses towards the train. So he probably was able to move through up to the rooftop, go through that door, which brought him into the inner sanctum. But then he asked if they had a... No way, because he... Then how did he make it through the chair room without getting lost? Because the door was right inside the entryway. Hmm. And Ruby only knew about the fountain because... She saw the, um, no wait, that was a different fountain, never mind. I'm mixing things up, but somehow we made it in safely. I'm assuming it's because the blanket immunity plus he probably was told the route to take in case they got separated and everything. But, yeah, so, somehow... Here is not being corrupted. Again, possibly because she hasn't done anything. She's just stood by Jean. She helped him get the relic in that, but other than that, 
since she didn't really do anything. Um, Ren and Nora have been fully corrupted now, by the looks of it. Um, Ruby's been corrupted, which, okay, yeah, she did prick her hand. She, here's the thing. You'd assume that Shion would have known that her coming out of it with a bloodied hand means that she touched the thorns. Excuse me. And then would have advised her, hey, you're running on limited time because, well, you're infected as well. There's also no guarantee that a dream infection would transfer over to the real world. Where maybe it's only the ruby that exists within Weiss's mind that got infected. Which is why it took her a layer deeper when she passed out. Hmm. Also why it seemed to be reaching her a lot quicker than... It did Weiss and Jean. Well, no, not Jean, but he also didn't have his aura when he was... Or know how to use his aura when he was infected, so... Hmm. That does sort of explain how it gets to the point where I know it gets to at the very end of this. Because I was confused how that happened. But I guess... That is the route that most logical. So how do they manage to get Ruby out of where she is without a dream version of Shion to use the dream version semblance on Ruby to send someone into her deeper layer of thing to rescue her? Hmm. Is gonna have to find out in future episodes because I've never understood. I know it's a classic trope in all infection type stories. You've got the character who gets infected, doesn't tell anyone until it's too late, and then all havoc breaks loose. And probably once she pricked her hand, she probably should have said. Hey, I touched these thorns. You told me not to do that. You explicitly said, be careful not to let them touch you. What's going to happen to me? Because these two got pricked and all this happened. So what's going to happen to me? Again, there's possibly no precedent for it. But for the warning to be in place, that implies that there was. But there's also the fact that once she noticed the swirl on her hand because she made an effort to close her fist around that once it um jolted her hand to make her lose the relic so close to the nightmare she probably should have mentioned it once it started making her emotions exemplified well magnified i guess she probably should have been like Hey, this is what happened with Weiss. I should probably mention this. And then she passed out. To be fair on that last one, she was listening to Jean's story about how everything happened and then quite possibly a got to the point where she's so out of it emotionally that she can't even think to... Um mention it there is also the fact that the infection may just have a borderline defense of stopping the um, host I guess from being able to think to tell people about their infection because that that could be a built-in defense mechanism for the grim I guess that makes sense. Hmm. That's what I'm going to go off of. 
Never mind. Ignore everything I just said. I've rationalized it. Don't know if it's true or not, but that's how I'm going to think of it. But, yeah. The, um... Giant statue of... Nicholas didn't really do anything. It just, um... Well, again, no. It distracted Yang and Blake. It was able to easily dispatch all of the sillies straight back to where they belong, all the Weisses, turn them back to their normal size, send them back to the fairground. Then it um, got distracted by fighting Yang and Blake, yet it wasn't able to deal with them as efficiently, probably because they're actually sentient in the dream. But I wonder if that's going to come back into it, the statue modifications. Weiss is really running on, like, borrowed time at the moment because now that the dream, now that the dream has built up long enough, now that it's dispatched all of, the, well, almost all of the dispensers, because it doesn't know about the train car, because it can't, um, or it at least thinks that if they're on the train car, they can't do anything, because once they step out, they're going to instantly be tracked down, and the other two are banished from the city, who knows where, in the landscape of Weiss's mind. So now that it's got all of the defenses down, now that it's infected the prison room, now that it's infected the Sillies area, it can just um, basically put her in the big sleep. It destroyed the protective um, area around Weiss's little office, I guess you could call that room. And, yeah, now it can go in there and basically just kill her, which was its goal all along. It... Here's the thing, though. What is its final goal? Like, if it drains the host fully, what happens then? Like, how is it to spread? To be fair, technically it did spread to Ruby. However, that was through external intervention that allowed that to happen. What happens if someone gets fully taken over? Like, it said it feeds off its off of their aura and everything. Basically keeps them in a catatonic state, which means that they can't get any more nutrients or anything. So, eventually, it's going to kill its host. What then? I know you probably don't need to worry about that because it doesn't happen. But, I'm curious. Anyway, um, I'm going to end this one here. So, because I'm just, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, why is this happening? Why does this happen? Why is this happen? And I think I'm going to wait till the very end of this show to actually get my full thoughts and questions out. Because things may be answered, but I'll catch you in the next one.